In my previous video, I explained the OSI and TCP IP layers and discussed various protocols at each level. In this video, we'll explore the inner workings of essential network protocols every software engineer should know. So let's get started. Every device on the internet has a unique IP address, kind of like a street address or phone number. Internet protocol or IP is a fundamental protocol and there are two main types, IPv4 and IPv6. IPv4 is the older system that uses four sets of numbers. For example, 192.168.1.1. It's like a limited set of addresses for a growing city. IPv6 is the newer system and uses a much longer combination of letters and numbers ensuring we never run out. So when you send something online, like an email or video, your data gets broken into smaller chunks called packets. Each packet has the sender IP address, like a return address on an envelope, the receiver's IP address, which is like the destination address on the envelope, a piece of your data, like a page from a book, and instructions on how to put the pieces back together. Routers are like traffic cops at intersections. They look at the destination IP address on each packet and decide the best route to send it on. This might involve sending it through multiple routers before it reaches the destination. So, putting it all together, your device creates packets with the destination IP address. Routers, they guide the packets through the internet and the destination device receives the packets and reassembles them into the original data such as your email or video. Now, IP doesn't establish a direct connection between devices. It's more like sending individual postcards than making a phone call. Think of IP like the postal system. Just as letter needs an address to reach its recipient, each data packet needs an IP address to find its way across the internet. IP is the foundation of internet. It allows devices all over the world to communicate with each other regardless of their type or location. IP tries its best to deliver packets but it doesn't guarantee that they will arrive in order or at all. This is why we have other protocols like TCP to ensure reliable delivery. TCP or Transmission Control Protocol is responsible for ensuring reliable data transmission. Imagine you're sending a fragile package across the country. You wouldn't just toss it in the email and hope for the best, right? You would want to make sure it arrives in one piece and in the right order. That's where TCP comes in. It breaks data into smaller packets sends them to the destination and reassembles them in the correct order. It's like the reliable mailman of the internet who guarantees delivery and makes sure all parts of message arrive intact. So before sending any data, TCP establishes a connection between the sender and receiver. This is like the mailman knocking on the door to make sure someone is home to accept the package. It's a two-way conversation where both devices agree on the terms of the delivery. And just like a book, TCP divides your data like a file or web page into smaller packets. Each packet gets a number, like a page number, so the receiving device knows how to put them back in order. And every time the receiver gets a packet, it sends a message back to the sender saying got it. This is called an acknowledgement. If the sender doesn't get an acknowledgement, it knows to resend the packet. TCP includes error checking to make sure the data arrives intact. It can detect if any packets are lost, corrupted or out of order and it will request the sender to resend those specific packets. TCP also helps manage the speed of data transfer. It can tell the sender to slow down if the receiver is getting overwhelmed, ensuring a smooth and efficient delivery. Once all data is successfully delivered, the connection is closed. TCP is crucial for web applications where reliable delivery is essential, like web browsing, email, or file transfers. So, TCP is the internet's reliable mailman, ensuring your data arrives safely and in the correct order. But what if speed is more important than absolute accuracy? What if you're okay with few dropped letters here and there as long as the message gets across quickly? That is where another protocol UDP comes into the spotlight. It's like high-speed couriers sacrificing some reliability for lightning fast delivery. UDP or User Datagram Protocol is a simpler, faster alternative to TCP. Think of UDP as an express delivery service. They are focused on speed, so they don't waste time with a lot of formalities. The package, in this case datagram, is labeled with the destination address and they quickly drop it off at the recipient's door. There is no signature required and they don't stick around to confirm if it was received. This makes them super fast, 
but there is a slight risk the package might get lost or delivered out of order. So unlike TCP, UDP doesn't bother with establishing a formal connection before sending data. It's like the courier just showing up and tossing the postcard in the mailbox. This saves time and makes UDP much faster than TCP. UDP sends data in individual units called datagrams. These are like postcards, small self-contained messages with the destination address and the data. There is no guarantee they will arrive in order and some might even get lost along the way. UDP headers is the information attached to each datagram. They are much smaller than TCP headers, making them lightweight and efficient for sending small amounts of data quickly. UDP doesn't offer any fancy error checking or retransmission of lost data. It's a fire and forget protocol, meaning it sends the datagrams and hopes for the best. This makes it super efficient for applications where speed is more important than perfect accuracy. UDP is ideal for applications where speed is critical and some data loss is acceptable, like live video streaming, where a few dropped frames are less noticeable than buffering or lag. Or online gaming, where real-time responsiveness is crucial for a smooth experience. Or voiceover protocol, where a slightly garbled voice is better than a delayed conversation. So, we have seen how UDP sacrifices reliability for speed, making it ideal for time-sensitive applications like live video and gaming. TCP, on the other hand, prioritizes accuracy and used for applications where every bit of data matters, like emails and file transfers. But what about the backbone of the internet itself? the World Wide Web. How does your browser actually fetch and display web pages? That is where HTTP or Hypertext Transfer Protocol steps in. HTTP is the foundation of web traffic. Think of HTTP as the language your browser uses to talk to the web servers, the powerful computers that store websites. It enables the transfer of web pages and other resources from a server to a client, typically a web browser. HTTP works on simple request response model, like a conversation. You type a website address and your browser sends a request to the server hosting that website. The request says, hey, can I see the web page? The server looks for the requested web page and sends it back to your browser as a response. The response might contain HTML, that is the code that structures the web pages, or images, videos, and other content. Your browser takes the response from the server and interprets the HTML to display the web page on your screen. Now do note that HTTP is stateless. That is, each HTTP request is independent with no memory of previous interaction. And this makes it simple but less efficient for certain tasks. Furthermore, HTTPS adds encryption for secure communication over the internet. Now, I have done a deep dive on HTTPS in this video with simple examples, which will also help you to understand the purpose of security keys, various security strategies, and algorithms. Now, coming back to HTTP, HTTP also uses different methods or verbs to specify the type of request. GET, for example, is the most common method and it's used to retrieve information from a web server like a web page or an image. Similarly, POST is used to send data to a web server like when you want to fill out a form or upload a file. PUT is used to replace an existing resource on a web server with new data and DELETE is used to remove a resources from a web server. Now, when the server sends a response, it also includes a status code. This is a three-digit number that tells your browser if the request was successful or not. And some common status codes you might be already aware or familiar to are 200 OK, 404 not found, or a 500 internal server error. HTTP is constantly evolving. Newer versions like HTTP2 and HTTP3 are designed to make web browsing even faster and more efficient. In fact, I have explained HTTP3 in my previous video, explaining in depth why it is so fast and some of its exciting work in this area that will further solidify your understanding on this protocol.